I think that a bailout for a few means that quite a few other people who may not be in financial straits have less incentive to continue to make their mortgage payments. And for example, on a radio show, I heard a man call in, and this was from another state, not California, but he had purchased a house a couple of years earlier for 180000 and he said the house next door to him, which was identical, was now selling for 90000 It was a foreclosure, and he could afford to make his payments, he said, but he didn't think it was fair. Why should he? you know, continue to make his payments, and he wanted to know if he could get a reduction of principal from his bank. Well, the answer is no. Banks are, in general, not willing to negotiate with you until you prove that you're having a financial problem. And that means that you have to skip a payment at the very least. The problem with skipping a payment is, then it's going to negatively affect your credit. So it's going to make it harder in the future for you to get a loan. It could affect the interest rates on your credit cards. It's going to cause other problems for you down the road. So I think when Congress talks about a bailout for homeowners, I think they could be leading themselves into a situation where our economy is much worse than it currently is, and that more foreclosures end up coming to the fore. There is something called the HOPE program, and the HOPE program is supposed to assist homeowners with making their payments and knocking off some of their principal. The problem with the HOPE program that I find is that you have to qualify for the loan. So in other words, you can't just say, I'd like to have a reduction of principal, I would um, like to have my payments reduced, but you actually have to provide documentation to show that you can qualify for that loan, that you can pay that loan. And there are a lot of people who, for legitimate reasons, cannot provide that documentation. So it makes it very difficult. I think there are a very limited number of people who would be able to take advantage of the HOPE program or any other program offered by a bank. In fact, it is my experience that the banks who are allowing some sort of renegotiation of loans, they don't just say, okay, we will make your payment lower or we will knock off principal. They want supporting documentation. They want to see your tax returns. They want to see your bank statements. They want to see that you are able to afford that new payment. And some people, for legitimate reasons, just don't have that documentation to support the income that needs to be on that piece of paper. There has been a lot of blame that has been aimed at no qualifying loans. But no qualifying loans are not the cause of this financial crisis or the cause of the foreclosure crisis. But we've had these loans for decades without any problems. So for people to say that it's because of these types of loans and that's the reason we're in the, the situation we're in, that's just plain untrue. It's disingenuous. They are an excellent tool. There are many, many people who are self-employed, who maybe got a recent raise, and they're unable to um, show that they have the, the income for two years, but they do have the income. They're unable to jump through the hoops that are required on the paperwork to get a loan that's fully documented. It's kind of interesting, my story when I bought my first home. I was a single mom. I had a newborn baby, I had no job, and I was not a real estate agent at the time, and luckily they had something called no qualifying loans. And so I was able to essentially get the property, get my first home without any sort of income verification. And I did have to put down 25% because at that time you had to put 25% down in order to get a no qualifying loan. And I specifically looked for a house that had a setup for a guest house so that I could rent the very back part of the property and live in the front part of the property. Now I had been renting an apartment for $500 a month at the time. I put my 25% down and I promptly rented out the guest house of the property and so someone lived in the back and they were paying 500 a month to me and then I lived in the front of the property which I had a four bedroom house for myself and my daughter and my entire payment ended up being 300 a month so I was paying less 
than I had been paying in an apartment, and yet I technically didn't qualify for the loan. First year passed in that house and the value doubled. I felt like it was a way to build wealth and I wanted to help other people realize the American dream. So I got my license and I've been a real estate agent ever since and I love my job because I really feel that I'm helping people.